The parts are well organized in your parts tray, clean and inspected. Of course, you'll use new gaskets and O-rings. You've got clean test oil to lubricate parts in assembly and written instructions with specs and tolerances. You've got the right tools and a clean workplace. You're ready to position the camshaft bearing while the housing is empty. Using a mandrel, press the outer race of the bearing and catch it like this. After fitting it in the top again, press it part way in. Leave about three millimeters. Place the shim over the bearing race and position the housing with the four screws, like this. Now locate the bearing race in the pump housing by pressing the governor housing firmly down. Then remove the screws and the housing. Back on the bench, mount the pump housing in its fixture. Barrel assemblies should be put together first. Rotate the barrel in its flange bushing until this pin engages the slot in the barrel. Then, with the flange bushing in this fixture, drop in the delivery valve. To the copper gasket, spring, and spacer, add the delivery valve holder. And torque it to the specs in your instructions. Then turn it over to add the washer and the baffle sleeve holes toward the snap ring. And again, be careful of your fingers. Slide the O-rings into their grooves and return the shims for that particular barrel. Keeping track now saves a lot of work later in testing. With the spacer and large O-ring in place, add extra lubrication to all O-rings to avoid pinching. Be sure the locating pin faces you on the rack side as you lower the barrel assembly onto the studs. After you've pushed it down to seat it, it should stay in place when you release it. If it springs up, remove it and check for a pinched O-ring. That kind of thing can cause leakage problems later on. When you add the washers and nuts, tighten the fasteners at least finger tight for your pressure test. That completes your barrel assemblies. Pressure testing checks your assembly so far. For the leak test, install just the plungers. Carefully introduce the tip of each oiled plunger to its mated barrel. And insert these holders to retain the plungers for the test. At the testing tank, you'll need a supply of compressed air. Connect your air hose fitting to the fuel inlet after plugging the fuel outlet. When the connection is complete to the fuel gallery, you're ready to lower the pump and apply the air pressure, about 5 bar, 75 psi. If you see leakage like this, check your O-rings but a very small stream of air bubbles directly from the plungers is normal. That completes your leak test. For installation of pumping elements, you will have removed holders and plungers from the leak test. But first, the rack. After putting in the rack from the other end, add the stop pin and the bushing retainer. Of course, you'll torque it with a special tool. Be sure you check the rack for freedom of movement. With the rack centered, lower the control sleeve and upper spring seat like this. Add the plunger spring and make sure it goes down all the way, that everything is seated. Now the plunger, and again, be careful not to drop it. Be sure this mark faces the rack. Use care and use test oil when you reinsert the tip of each plunger into its barrel. 
fit the tool for compressing the plunger spring. And install your roller tappet assemblies. Now you have an alignment job. The tangs of each plunger must line up with the control sleeve. Here's how you do it. Nudge the tappet with this tool as you move the rack bit by bit until you feel the plunger tangs enter the sleeve. Once that happens, push the tappet all the way down and insert the holder tool. When they're all in, you can remove the spring compressor tool. Now is the time to add the rack spring, its seat and block to complete the reassembly of the pumping elements. Camshaft is your next installation. The governor housing with its shim is necessary now to hold the position of the camshaft bearing. After torquing the governor housing in place, slide in the camshaft with its bearings. On most pumps, that includes the center bearing. Tighten the center bearing as specified. These shims on the bearing plate determine the camshaft end play. After you install them and screw in the plate, rotate the camshaft to be sure it's free and the bearings are seated. To check the cam position, use this tool. Fit it to the taper of the camshaft and measure the clearance from the tool to the pump housing, like this. If you change the bearing position, you may have to readjust this shim between the governor and the pump housing. See your written instructions. Here's how you'll check the end play using this tool. Preload the indicator about one millimeter. As you pull the tool straight out, swivel it to seat the bearings, then zero the dial. Then push firmly straight in and swivel it. Read the end play. If it's not to spec, change the shims under the drive end bearing plate. With the drive hub installed to rotate the camshaft, you can remove each tappet holder without letting its tappet slam down onto the cam lobe. With all the holders removed, you can insert the plugs in the tappet holder openings. Fit the new gasket and attach the bottom cover. Some of these concluding steps may come later if you're testing the pump right after reassembly. But it's important now to center the flange bushing of number one, then tighten number one, and check the rack for free movement. Center and tighten number two and check the rack for free movement, and so on. They'll all need to be torqued after calibration. Finally, you may want to install the rack cap and the overflow valve. If the pump's going on the shelf before calibration, add the top cover and protective caps, as well as the feed pump. And there you've completed reassembly of the P-Pump. Brought to you by Bosch.